Chapter 2 Early the next morning, while the other servants still snuffled and snored in their sleep, Cheng Li rose in silence from his raised brick sleeping bench, gathered up his blanket and his extra pair of baggy brown pants, and slipped from the room. This morning, he would go take a closer look at those caravans and choose one to join. In the pre-dawn darkness, he made his way through the courtyard house along the path that separated the two main courtyards from those of the servants, and then carefully walked around the ornately carved wooden screen that guarded the front entrance from evil spirits. He lifted the bolt in the gate, willing it not to creak, and stepped outside. He'd gone down this alley many times. But this time, he had no donkey, no cart, and no little imp. What he did have was a tight knot in the pit of his stomach. He stepped away from the only life he'd ever known. He walked to the main road and headed toward the dark silhouette of the city gate. He'd never seen it in the dark of early morning, and he stared up at the top, where the wide eaves of the lookout towers were curved skyward like some huge bird spreading its wings. Standing there, he waited with the others until the bronze bell in the center of the city rang out to announce the opening of the gates. The soldier in the watchtower called in a loud voice, All is well! Chang'an greets a new day! Hearing the call, the soldiers on guard lifted, a, lifted the huge oaken beam and shoved apart the massive wooden doors. As the gates groaned open, crowds of people crushed through to begin their day. Those waiting outside pushed in, those waiting inside shoved their way out. Chang Li elbowed his way into a space behind a rumbling ox cart, moved out through the gate, and headed to the nearby field where the caravans were parked. The morning mist lay close to the ground, waiting for the rising sun to burn it away. Everywhere he looked, animals lay resting like gray-brown boulders. Scattered among them stood the men stretching and yawning and folding up their blankets. The wisps of smoke rose from fires where cooks prepared breakfast. Which one shall I approach? wondered Cheng Li. What will I say? Hey boy, what brings you out here so early? A voice challenged him. Startled, Cheng Li turned. A boy, head and shoulders taller than he, and dressed in the short brown tunic and baggy gray pants of a caravan trade, came up behind him. I've seen you before. Where's your donkey cart? The boy asked with an easy smile that invited confidence. Didn't bring it, Cheng Li answered. I'm coming to work on a caravan. Who are you working for? The older boy asked. Don't know. Don't have a job yet. Then it's a good thing I found you, boy. I have the perfect job for you with a good master. Come on. Curious, Cheng Li fell into step beside the new boy. Who are you? he asked, cautious of such an easy friendship. They call me fourth brother, said the boy. My family is large, and my father gave me to the caravan master so that I'd have food to eat. Master Fong, the leader of our caravan, says I'm strong enough now to work with the caravan guards instead of the animals. The boy clenched his fists and flexed his arm of his arm muscles right in front of Cheng Li's face. That means, you see, They'll need somebody to take over my old job. What did you do? asked Cheng Li. A bunch of little bunch of the easy jobs. Help the cook, take care of camels and donkeys, lots of things. Cheng Li opened his mouth to ask what lots really meant, but the boy stopped beside a man bending over the side of a resting camel, mending the tears in a red and black blanket that fit around the beast's two humps. Master Fong, said Fourth Brother, I've brought you a new worker. The boy bowed to his master and ducked around to the other side of the camel and tugged on the ropes to secure the blanket. Master Fong looked up and Cheng Li jumped back, startled at the fierce expression on the man's face. Who? Where? he asked, ignoring Cheng Li. Thick black eyebrows shadowed the man's eyes and a frown deepened the lines of his wrinkled face. A scar across his left cheek gave evidence of a fight. Me, honorable master, Cheng Li said. I've come to work for you. You? The master spat on the ground. You are a child. We have no work for children. Cheng Li felt his mouth drop open. 
He might be small, but he was not a child. I'm not a child. I'm 13, and I'm strong. He pulled up straighter, trying to look sturdier, and in doing so, he forgot to show respect to the older man. He took a deep breath and began again. Sir, my family name is Chao. My personal name is Cheng Li. I am the son of Imperial, Imperial Inspector Chao Cheng Wan. I know I'm skinny, but I've worked for the silk merchant since I was six years old. And, he said, his eyes flashing, I can work for you. The man looked up and exploded into laughter. Ha! he roared. Whoever you are, you are one determined tadpole, but still too young to work a caravan. Can you ride? Can you bargain? Can you fight? I think not. Be gone. The man turned his back on Cheng Li and continued his work. Cheng Li's face tensed and his ears burned as he concentrated on this new insult. Forcing himself to think slowly, he remembered his manners, bowed his head, and looked down at the ground. Good master, may you live forever. I am young and truly of no account, he said, but I can work hard. You are too young, and I see you have a bit of a temper. Not good for the caravan. Go away. Cheng Li stepped back, blew out a great puff of air, and tried to think what to do next. Before he could speak, a new sound cut through the morning air. Make way, make way for the words of the emperor. Across the field marched four men dressed in the long red robes that marked them as imperial messengers. A servant in front holding aloft the red silk banner embroidered with the golden dragon called out the warning. Each man walked with his head held high, his mouth tight and his eyes staring straight ahead. Cheng Li thought they looked as though they were trying to pinch the unwelcome smell of camels, horses, and donkeys out of their important imperial noises. Master Fong, the flag bearer bellowed, we seek Master Fong. Master's face drained of color. His scowl disappeared. He dropped to his knees as he called out, At your service, most honorable excellency. Cheng Li stopped. Cheng Li stopped staring and dropped to all fours, fours beside the master. Master Fong, the records say that you are officially licensed to carry silk to the far kingdom of Kashgar. Is that true? Yes, my lord. You have made this journey many times, all successfully? Yes, my lord. Our great and glorious emperor knows of your record and chooses you for a high honor. He sends a princess, the princess Meiling, to marry King Gladden, ruler of a nomad kingdom in the great mountains north of Kashgar. The princess, with her possessions and her personal servants, will join you tomorrow. The journey over 2,000 miles is full of danger. For her safety, she will travel in the middle of your caravan. She will be protected by her own royal guards with the assistance of your men. Master Fong bent low, shoving his forehead deeper into the dust. I am not worthy of such an honor, he grumbled. Behind him, Chang Li caught the whisper of Fourth Brother's voice. He isn't prepared for it either. As if in echo, Master Fong continued, I am ill prepared for such an honor, my lord. My workers are clumsy and ignorant men. And he doesn't want to wait until tomorrow to start, came the whisper from behind the camel's hump. He's ready to leave today. The messenger stepped forward and handed Master Fong a wooden document covered with writing. The princess and her carts will arrive at sunup tomorrow. Here are your orders. She is to be delivered to the fair-haired King Gladden, who will meet your caravan when it reaches the oasis of Kashgar at the end of the great Takalamakan Desert. Her servants will travel with you and then accompany her to her new home, His Majesty has spoken. The men did not wait for an answer. They turned away with robes billowing, 
feet marching and eyes staring straight ahead, they followed their flag bearer back toward the safety of the city. Well, Tadpole, Master Fong's voice, rough voice made Cheng Li scramble to his feet. I see you are still here. Now it appears you can be useful after all, fourth brother. Master said, motioning to the older boy. You and the skinny one, go tell the others who plan to travel with us that we are delayed until tomorrow. They will understand. They have seen the messengers. Fourth brother and Cheng Li ran off in opposite directions to deliver the message to each caravan master. When Cheng Li finished and turned back toward Master Fong, he noticed a small boy with a lopsided limp coming across the field. Little limp, what are you doing out here? Cheng Li yelled and then stopped in surprise as he saw a fourth brother run up behind the boy, knock him down, and keep on running. Stop, thief! Little Imp yelled, scrambling to his feet and pointing at the fourth brother. Cheng Li propelled his body forward, dodging around loaded camels, and sprinted across the field. He collided with fourth brother, throwing him off balance and slamming him to the ground. Let go of me, yelled fourth brother. What did you steal? Nothing, you're crazy, I have nothing. Liar, little limp called out. He's got the packet. Old cook sent me to find you. She said to give it to you. Chang Li straddled fourth brother and pounded on his back. The bigger boy yelled and squirmed, but Chang Li held him down. Well, he barked to the back of fourth brother's head. Oh, this? How was I supposed to know it was yours? Fourth brother opened his eye, opened his hand. A small brown bundle of rough cloth tumbled out. You're my friend. I'd never lay a hand on anything of yours. Here, take it. Cheng Li grabbed the packet and wondered how he'd suddenly become fourth brother's friend. Open it. Let's see what you have, fourth brother grinned as he rolled over to sit on the ground. Don't look so worried. I won't touch it. I'm your friend, remember? Cheng Li unfolded the cloth. Into his hand slid a crescent of pale green jade, broken along the edge with part of a word written in unfamiliar script etched across the surface. He rubbed his finger over the writing, wondered, wondering what it said. Oh, now who's the thief? Fourth brother leaned forward to stare at the stone in Cheng Li's hand. There's no way a servant boy owns that. Cheng Li held the precious jade in his hand. I didn't steal it. It belonged to my father. Old cook told me about it, but I've never seen it before. He stared at the jade, turned it over, smelled it, and then rubbed it slowly against his cheek. Wherever the jade touched, he felt the coolness of soft spring breeze. Little Limp, coming near now that it seemed safe, pulled at Cheng Li's tunic to get his attention. Old Cook said that this piece of jade should unlock the secrets of your past, news of your father, and your own future might be hidden with the other half of this jade. If you can find the broken piece, the person who has it may know the answers. And maybe then, Little Limp paused and shrugged his shoulders, the wind will finally let you go. Excuse me, I'm going to say that again. And maybe then, Little Limp paused and shrugged his shoulders, the wind will finally let go of you. I've seen Jade like that at the bazaar, Fourth Brother said, in awe, still gawking at the precious stone. But I've never touched it. Here, Cheng Li said, feel it. He watched the older boy run his fingers across the smooth surface and touch them carefully along the jagged broken edge. Then Cheng Li took the stone, put, in, put it into the small cloth pouch, tied it to his belt, and pulled the string tight. Cheng Li closed his hand firmly over the packet and that now hung at his side. I've never touched anything that belonged to my father, he murmured wondering why the jade was broken, what had happened to the rest of it. He stood there on the field, his mind full of questions, pondering what to do next. Master Fong had told him to go spread the news of the caravan's delay, 
and he had done that, did that mean he was hired? The only way to find out was to go back to the master and ask him. As he approached, the master looked up. His gruff voice made Cheng Li wince. I see that you fight easily. You are a quarrelsome lad. Excuse me, sorry. Are you a quarrelsome, quarrelsome lad? The scar on his face deepened and Cheng Li wondered about his own fight. Cheng Li remembered his manners. I am not quarrelsome, master, but I don't like it when people are unfair or unjust. I run an honest caravan, said Master Fong. We will have no fights among ourselves, that is, but work we will have a plenty. Master, said Chang Li, remembering his manners, I am a very worth I am a very worthless person, but I do know how to work. I know how to I know how to care for donkeys. I feed them, brush them, clean their hooves, and put ointment on their sores. I know how to soothe their cranky spirits and convince them to work. We do have donkeys, but mostly we have camels. Have you ever worked with camels? I think not. The master glanced at the nearest beast, with which stared back through long black eyelashes. Camels listen but they do not like to obey orders. When they are well treated, they are patient, faithful workers, but if not, they bite, they kick, they spit. Master, I know nothing about camels, but I am ready to learn. You will tire of them, working with them day and night, month after month, perhaps year upon year. It is a long, long walk to Kashgar. Master rubbed his scarred cheek and watched Cheng Li to see how he would react. Cheng Li felt his eyes narrowing and his teeth clenching in frustration. He lowered his head, hoping to look more respectful than he felt. What's a young one like you want on a caravan anyway? You're better off here in Chang'an. Are you running away? Are you in trouble? Master Fong's eyes nearly disappeared as his brushy eyebrows pulled down in a menacing frown. No, master, not at all, master. And Cheng Li began, to te began his story again. I was born somewhere in the desert. I don't really know where. And now every day and, ev and every night, I feel the wind. Nobody else feels it. It's desert wind. It's pulling me. And Cheng Li stopped. And the thought of the broken jade. He didn't want to talk about that. He looked back at Master Fong. I want to go and see the land where I was born. The master relaxed and his voice softened. You tell me your name is Cheng Li, but I will call you as I see you, skinny one. We can indeed use your hands. Many small caravans will join with our large one, for there is safety in numbers. And now that the princess is also coming with us, we do need workers. I tell you, though, be warned. The desert is more brutal than any human master. Without fail, we will know hunger, thirst, and constant danger. Back out now if you wish, he waited. Chang Li did not move. 